Kepler's first law basically just goes through and describes the different pieces of the elliptical orbit of the planet around the sun. So the sun is going to be at one of the foci, and you need to know what all of these different things are. So C is clearly the distance from the middle to one of the two foci. A is the distance from the middle to the outer edge of the larger of the two axes, and B is the distance for the minor axis. Now, some of the names here. So the major axis is actually 2A, and the minor axis is 2B. Now, it might not seem all that exciting, Kepler's first law. Realize that this was rather groundbreaking because before this, everybody thought that the Earth was the center of the universe. And this was saying that the Earth was not the center of the universe, that the Sun was the center. But anyway, um, so the objects, the Earth, and all of the celestial objects move in elliptical orbits around the Sun. Now, the eccentricity is equal to C over A. Now, the eccentricity of the Earth is equal to 0.017, which makes it very close to what? A circle. It's very close to a circle. The eccentricity of the Earth is 0.017. The eccentricity of a circle is going to be, well, um, the eccentricity of a circle is going to just be zero because C would be equal to zero. So realize while the orbits of the planets are in fact ellipses, they're actually very close to circles. And when we deal with them as far as math is concerned in this class, we are actually going to deal with the orbits as circles. That is essentially Kepler's first law. Kepler's second law. I don't think I'm even going to write anything down about Kepler's second law. All I'm going to do is talk through the idea behind Kepler's second law. Kepler's second law states, if we've got the mass of the planet, we've got the mass of the sun, this here, the red arrow is the direction of the velocity. This blue arrow is the direction of the force of gravity. Over time, there is going to be an area carved out by the r, the radius, and the distance traveled, the arc length traveled along uh, the path. And as long as the time is the same, the area of that triangle is going to be the same regardless of where the planet is on its orbit. So if we were to draw one down here, it would look more like this for the same amount of time so that we would get a much larger area that would match the area that's there. And that is um, Kepler's second law. It's the basic idea. From this, you should be able to tell, is the object moving faster over here when it has a larger radius, or is it moving faster when it's over here when it has a smaller radius from the sun? Small, right? Because in order to have the same area, it must be moving much faster because the radius is small. So that's a basic concept. We'll get to a little bit further into the class. We'll talk about and figure out the difference in the velocities, but you should have a basic idea of how it changes as you get farther and closer to the sun.